Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to our show today. My name is Becky Auer, and I am your host, and I interview entrepreneurs and business owners and innovators and experts who have had the spotlight and success and are ready to share their knowledge with you. I am over the top thrilled to have our guest here today. Her name is Linda Barnicott. She is a powerhouse and is known as the painter of memories. And I just want to tell you before I let her come on and tell you all about herself, she has such an impressive background. And what's even more amazing is that she is self-taught in painting. It's unbelievable when I'm going to show you some of her paintings later and it's just incredible. So she's won numerous awards, too many to list, or by the time I would list them, it would be the end of the show. <laughs> but a couple of her highlights are that she was commissioned by the American Cancer Society of Pittsburgh to create their painting or create a painting using uh, for their annual holiday cards, which I have never heard of anyone doing before. So that's incredible. She also also received a special proclamation from the city of Pittsburgh commemorating her tremendous contribution. I'm going to read this because it's so impressive. Tremendous contribution in capturing and preserving many sites in and around the Pittsburgh area. So if you are just joining us, you are in for a treat. We're going to showcase some of her uh, amazing uh, paintings and some of the awesome things that she's doing. So, um, so Linda, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Becky. I am so excited to be here with you. I'm really honored that you that you want to have me on. So, oh my um, gosh, it's incredible. Well, I've known you just personally for what at least ten years, and have followed your journey from you know budding artist right to just like taking over the world now. So it's really been <laughs> an impressive journey. And I just love showing up with my kids down at the um, marketplace every winter to see you and at the home show and, you know, all the places that you go. So for the people that don't know you that are tuning in, will you just tell them a little bit about your background and kind of how you got started and where you are today? Well, I grew up on the other side of the state in a little suburb outside of Philadelphia, Eddington. And drawing for me was my little my little zone growing up. And so I, I learned how to draw. I was fascinated with people's faces. So I would draw portraits. And I, that took me all the way through my school years and into adulthood uh, where I picked up pastels. So I went from drawing to pastels. And I used to sit in front of custom corners, believe it or not, and do their uh, do portraits. And then they would do the matting and the framing. And then, you know, then one day someone asked me, uh, the owner's husband asked me if I would do a painting of a streetcar. And I had told him, I said, I had never drawn a building in my life. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it always starts. <laughs> yeah. So um, while my husband was in seminary, um, I had a job downtown and my bus stop was under Kaufman's clock. So I decided if I'm going to do a streetcar, I need to do it by Kaufman's clock since I knew it so well. And at that point, I had learned that for generations, people met there. So, um, so true. So true, especially in Pittsburgh. Yeah. So that was my my first Pittsburgh painting. So I went from portraits to Pittsburgh paintings in 1989. Wow. Well, that's incredible. So for people that are watching that are not from Pittsburgh, I am just going to share. This is the Kaufman's clock. And this is what Linda kind of has become known for is this one original um, painting. So do you still love painting? Um, what do you like painting best right now? Oh, gosh. Um, I love it all. I actually love it all. I am starting back into the Pittsburgh paintings again. I just took a 10 year, uh, or I'm sorry, a 10 painting uh, hiatus and I painted Santa Claus. <laughs> no, I'm Santa. <laughs> yeah. so it was nice because it kind of brought the portraits back into my life again. And I always add it on some of the bigger paintings of Santa. I always add a little bit of Pittsburgh. So whether uh -huh. they're national or not, you have a little bit of Pittsburgh in there. Um, the painting of Kaufman's clock was really interesting because, um, again, it was the first time I ever 
drew a building. And of course, it looked like it was going to fall over. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was fortunate enough to live next door to what ended up being a graphic artist. His name was Gary. He would spend hours with me teaching me how to make sure the building didn't look like it was going to fall down. And then once, and I, there were a lot of tears, trust me, hours and tears that went into learning perspective, um, because it's totally different from portraits. Um, so I um, finished it so, and then I could paint it. Once I finished drawing it, I could paint it. And then once I painted it, it ended up really being the start of my Pittsburgh career. Wow. Really That's exciting. amazing. Well, I thought it was harder to paint people than portraits. Is I, You know, a lot of people come up to me and say that. A lot of artists come up to me and say that, that they can't draw people. For me, the faces, I, right? Because you have to fill in all the contours and that. I, I guess you do that otherwise. Yeah, but for me, it was the opposite. I was so in love with people's faces and their eyes and, and everything. It was just, it was very natural for me to do people. And that's why you see people in my paintings. It's not just buildings, unless it's like from the Overlook or something like that. And you'd have to have somebody jump it off a bridge. To be <laughs> um, but that's why there are people in my paintings. Well, tell the audience, because I know this because you shared it with me a long time ago, but you always draw a certain someone in your paintings. So I love this. <laughs> yeah. Could I encourage you to bring that painting back up again? Oh, sure. Okay. So... Everybody in that painting was kind of made up, all right? Except for I needed somebody in the display window looking like they were hanging a wreath. So I said to my husband, can you like just look like you're like standing in the studio looking and, and, and putting up a wreath? And I drew him in the painting. Oh and so he was my one person that was real there, okay? When I did my second painting of the Cathedral of Learning, which actually you can see behind me, um, oh. there was a fellow that I had painted on the bench. And I realized that in the painting, it kind of looks like it's raining in the foreground, but there's that sunset at the end, like going through colleges, you know? Yep. And, um, but then I realized the person on the bench looked like they were getting rained on. So I took them off the bench. <laughs> My husband says to me, now you have a hole in your composition. You need somebody there. And I says, okay, you go put on your raincoat and your hat. You sit on the bench and I'll draw you in. <laughs> and, and I I, so by the time I started painting the third painting, I was doing artist signings for the Cathedral of Learning and customers were coming up and saying, where are you putting your husband in your next painting? I didn't even know they knew. Oh, you know, nice. and I came home and I says, they're expecting you. So he put on his coat and his rain hat again, and he stood against the dining room uh, wall. And I, I drew him in and painted him into the next painting. And it became a thing. Yeah, now it's a thing, right? I like <laughs> that. He, like, he likes the Alfred Hitchcock. <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfectly perfect. I love it. I think it's kind of just such a sly little thing. And it's so cute that it's between you and him, too. You know, yeah. it's personal yet public for everyone to see so i love yeah, it yeah so when i looked when i was talking to you about doing the show you know i knew some of your paintings but when we took a look kind of in depth at all the paintings you've done there's so many of them that are winter scenes why is that okay well there's a real good reason for that um i well you know the first six that i did i did kind of like fall winter because they kind of they were released right in the fall, early winter time too. And you know, it's a very romantic time of year. It can be anyway. <laughs> um, but in 1998, I was, uh, it was actually after I did a whole bunch, started doing Kennywood, um, I was at the Home and Garden Show and somebody who was representative of the American Cancer Society approached me and asked if I would do their holiday card for the Pittsburgh chapter. Little did I know that would be 17 years of work. Wow. Every holiday for their holiday greeting card. They earned $750,000 just from Christmas cards. Of oh, my God. Years. And unfortunately, at 17, at the 17-year mark, they, um, they had to close the program down. Wow. Um, so, but 
we did a lot of good work over the years. And that's why a lot of my paintings are winter Christmas scenes. Oh, that then, yeah, so then I go on to do Santa Claus for 10 paintings, you know? I right. Do that winter. <laughs> right, right. And oh my gosh, those, the Jolly Old Elf series, um, you know, I don't have all of them to pull up because it would take three hours, right? But they're so amazing. So if you're watching this and you want to see, Linda's drawings on the jolly old elf. I'm going to share her website in a little bit. Go to it, check it out. It's unbelievable. Thanks. But tell, tell the viewers too, because one of my favorite things that you paint is Kennywood. So for if you're not from Pittsburgh and you're watching this, Kennywood Park is a thing here in Pittsburgh. It's been around and open since forever. Um, but you have done several drawings uh, at Kennywood. So okay. tell us a little bit about how you started doing those. And then I'll try and pull them up while you're talking um, to show show people an, uh, an example. A couple of them, okay. Um, so my first official Pittsburgh date back in 1977, my not knowingly soon to be husband decided <laughs> to take me to Kennywood for our first first Pittsburgh date, mm -hmm. and. Um, and and while we were there, we actually, you know, rode the carousel, but we were walking by the carousel and there was this man who Tom had said, oh, has been there as long as he could remember. And that was in 1977. Aww. And uh, he says he always took the tickets off the carousel. And you can see him actually on this painting, standing backwards, riding the carousel, kind of leaning out. His oh, yeah. Tony Sacramento. <laughs> and he actually posed for me, which was really cool. Uh, my husband and my two girls are in the right corner. And um, so anyway, we met and it was just something that I always wanted to paint. It was the Kennywood series. And in 1995, I had that opportunity. I called Rick C back up and I asked him, um, he had just finished his, his film of Kennywood Memories. Uh -huh. And I said to him, like, you know, how do I, could I? And he says, yeah, you need to call Mary Lou Rosemeyer and tell her I said hi. And I was really nervous. But like, as soon as I talked to Rick C back, he said, Oh, Linda, I've been following your work for years. That's <laughs> Which so is really cool. cool. Yeah. And uh, Mary Lee Rosemeyer, I called her up and I says, I, I'm a Pittsburgh artist. and I really like to do some paintings of Kennywood, you know, because, you know, personally, it's my my memories, you know. Right. And, uh, and she, her response was, that would be wonderful. And it started this 10-year trek through Kennywood. Wow. Um, painting all these different scenes. I pretty much documented almost everything but the bumper cars. <laughs> no, they're, still, they're still there. They're still there. That's right. Yeah. There's still time. Yeah. Um, so when I was sketching the carousel that you had had up a little while ago, my youngest daughter was four at the time and she walked into my studio and I'm, I'm working on my work, um, sketching it out. And she says, where are you going to put Brittany and me? <laughs> no pressure, mom. Yeah, I could do that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking Tom, Tom, Tom all the time, right? <laughs> At this point, I, I got so used to putting him in the painting. And I, I called Mary Lee Rosemeyer up and, and I invited a whole bunch of family and friends. And we all met at the carousel on opening day in 1995. And I, I took a ton of photographs and worked from those photographs and put everybody. So everybody in that painting are real from that point on, everybody in the paintings have been real people that have been walking around and, and stuff like that. It's been really cool. No, that's cool. Yeah. yeah that's cool. They, the fun part about that whole thing is I assume, and you can tell me whether this is true or not, like if I contacted you to do a painting where I wanted to be drawn into the painting, that you would have no problem doing that. I actually have done that over the years. Yeah, I've had people say, well, you want to model for one of your paintings? And it's like, no problem. Oh, you know? that's so cool. <laughs> what yeah. a unique gift, too, like with, with uh, all the holidays and Mother's Days and, you know, things that you could think of what unique gift you could give somebody. I'm sure it's a bit costly because you're kind of famous now, but um, but it would be such a cool, unique thing to do for somebody. That's, that's well, pretty awesome. You know what? One of the fun things that has happened is I have a friend who's in the real estate um, and she is in one of my paintings. Actually, she's in another painting I did of Coffin's Clock called Waiting for You Under Coffin's Clock. Every time she sells a house, she has me frame up one of those in like a little eight by 10 frame. And I write on the back of it and sign it and everything for her. And she gives it to her 
her customers when she sells a house as a housewarming oh, gift. I love oh, that idea. Cool. Yeah. And they used to use my uh, paintings uh, for Ameriprise as their sales awards. Wow. Uh, so each year, like the sales guys would get one of my paintings and we'd, we'd do a cutout on the, on the mat with what they, you know, had earned, you know, as far really? as, you know, their, their sales. So it was really cool. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. That's very cool. Well, do you, have you ever painted anybody famous? Yes. <laughs> I had, I had some really cool opportunities over the years. Um, one of them being Bill Mazeroski. Oh, wow. It's like, it was, it was amazing. Um, and I well, met for people Jim that don't know, tell people who Bill Mazeroski is. We know in Pittsburgh, of course, but it's only the greatest baseball <laughs> event of the of the century. <laughs> in 19, 1960, his world famous home run earned them the World Series. Yeah. And uh and you know, and to talk to Bill Mazeroski, his comment is you know, I'm a great second baseman, but I was never a hitter. He says, that was a fluke. I should have never gotten the attention that I got for that. You know, very modest, very kind, loving man uh, who just, oh, it was just such a great experience. Yeah, that's really, um, really neat. Well, who else? Who else? Franco Harris. Oh, yeah. Franco. We're talking about monumental right. moments in the <laughs> history my God. the immaculate reception um and he you know what was really neat about franco is we were text buddies you know through this whole thing and the, my family my kids were going nuts because franco's texting me and i'm texting them back but he actually worked with me throughout the entire project which was really cool you yeah, know so as cool. i would sketch something or draw or paint something i could send it to him get his response if i needed to make a few corrections i could do that it was really really wonderful and then we unveiled it at a private party at the history center where tom and i got to meet a whole bunch of the 1972 steelers Wow. And um, I remember when we left there saying to Tom, elbowing him and saying, Aren't you glad you married me? Because <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm making you famous too. <laughs> well, I mean, he just got a chance to meet all of his heroes from, from childhood. And I, it was just really a nice experience. Um, Nellie King, who was a, a pirate um, announcer as well as a yes. actor, um, called. Uh, back in the day when you had answering machines, yeah, yeah, I got this Nelson King on the answering machine, and he, you know, introduced himself, you know, and said that he'd like to meet up with me so I could tell him how, because I was doing lithographs and he wanted to learn how to, he wanted to do something in a lithograph form. So Tom came home from the church and I said, oh, by the way, a guy named Nelson King is coming over to our house on Thursday to talk about lithographs. And he goes, oh. Nellie King, <laughs> another childhood hero. <laughs> and then Nellie King ended up talking to the the men in our um in our church, which was oh, really nice sweet. for a function. Yeah, which was really really cool. So oh, I've yeah. had a chance to meet a lot of really wonderful people over the yeah. years, and I'm very grateful. Cool. Oh, you bet, you bet. Well, it's because you're so awesomely talented. So tell us about um, what, like, what was your biggest project? Oh, well, that uh, hands down. Uh, Forbes Hospital in Monroeville now oh. has a four foot by 40 foot um, history wall. Wow. Uh, it was made up of five panels. Each one was uh, four by eights, okay, right in succession with each other. They had the unveiling on November 6th, I believe it was. It was amazing. It was, it was such a great ending to the project because the project lasted i think i signed the contract in 2014 and it was just a lot a lot of work oh, so I can imagine <laughs> yes but on the fifth panel riding one of the upmc healthy bike rides <laughs> is my husband <laughs> Of course it was. <laughs> it made a lot of fun. It made a lot of fun. I had to put them on there somewhere. So of course, of course. Well, that is that. Wow. How long did that take you? Um. Well, about four years. <laughs> I, I can imagine because the yeah. like when anyone looks at your paintings, the detail in them is incredible, and I can't imagine you know, five panels that humongous with your yeah. detailing that it would take you any less. So that's, that's 
absolutely incredible. Yeah, it was five different themes. So, you know, you had like the beginning um, where they fundraised for the hospital. You had what I called the faces of care with all the people who volunteered and helped and the nurses, the doctors, everything. Uh, the middle one was um, the community and the interfaith ministries in Monroeville, which is really a very yeah. great area of, around our city. Uh, the fourth one was um, Forbes Hospital Now. Oh, and the okay. fifth one was how it, it all fit into the Allegheny Health ne Network. Wow. And I have to say, all along the way, they couldn't have been nicer to me during hmm. the whole project. And it was, it just, like I said, it was just a wonderful way to finish it up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Able, so. Well, yeah, that's a lot. Well, well, out of all the paintings that you've done, how many paintings do you think you have painted, by the way? I have no idea. <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I should have told you I might ask you that question. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Never mind. Which is your favorite? Which is your favorite painting? Okay. It probably, you know, there's different favorite ones in different, like, you know, the Santa series, the Pittsburgh series, the Kennywood series. But I think my ultimate favorite is called Coasting Through Kennywood. And there is a little backstory to that. If we have it, okay. I can tell it to you. Please, please. I'm going to, uh, that's one of the ones that we have. So I'm going to pull it up. Okay. So back in 1977, on that first Pittsburgh date in Pittsburgh, we had known each other three months at that time over the phone and he had visited me twice. My husband that weekend decides to propose to me. Okay. So like, he's like hinting around and sorry, Tom, you're probably going to hear this again. I apologize right now. <laughs> we were on the bridge overlooking this beautiful lake with the old aluminum boats. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I had these dreams that we got engaged and we got married and they were really off the wall dreams. And he got this look on his face and he walked away. Oh, thought, oh what did I say? Right, right. Oh, my <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, fortunately for me, the next night, five minutes before the last colloding call for my flight to go back home, he proposed to me and it started our, our big, long distance relationship. <laughs> Aww, that's so cute. So in this painting are tons of my favorite people. Aww. On the right side with the two girls is my husband and my daughters. And so the other really neat thing, and you just kind of covered it up with the title, but on the boat that's, okay, okay. the boat that's right there, you'll see a number 22. Yes. Now, I do not know if Kenny would ever had a number 22, but it was my husband's number when he sold shoes at South Hills Village Mall in Bethel Park. And um, he would write his number 22 on his bills. He just had a habit of doing it. And the very first time we we met and he, he came or he, we re-met, actually, he came out to uh, New Jersey with me and we were on this college thing where I was up in this in the woods, tearing down something, but trying to make like a, an artist colony. OK, for my college. OK, and we took a break. And in the middle of the woods, we came across this little ice cream place called Dilly's. And we ordered food, and the dollar bill that came back to us as change had his number 22 on it. No way. My first date with him. Oh, so, well, <laughs> you told me not to do that. Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, um, no, obviously it was meant to be, right? That's crazy. <laughs> That's unbelievable, really. So I, mean I had always I'd always wanted to paint Kenny Wood, and this painting in particular – there's so many important people. It was where he almost proposed to me. It was also where I set up my tent for 18 years during the grand Victorian days, which later became Celebrate America. Wow. And I would I would sit there. So that's my view. So there were so many things that were important to me in this painting, so many special people that um, someone came over to buy it. And, you know, Tom's a minister. We're dirt poor. And this guy says, how much? And I said, I'm sorry, that one's not for sale. Which, of course, just rackets up the price even more. <laughs> <laughs> so Tom came home from church and I said, I'm sorry, honey, but I can't sell this painting. 
<laughs> so so it, is, it is in my collection and it is my favorite and it just has such an emotional pull for me. Thank you for asking. Yeah. And is this one, it, you have prints though, like people could buy a print if they just love it? Yeah, I actually have uh, one still that's secondary market, um, which means it's a retired print. And then I have posters of it, which is like bigger than a note card, you know, so yeah, you can yeah. actually see the detail, which is really nice. Yeah, that's but really yes, nice. The website. Yeah, yeah, very, very good. Well, um, tell, tell us a little bit about, I saw or I was reading through your bio that you paint, paint plain air landscapes. Okay. How did that all get started? Because you're so awesome at this and with people. Okay, so I do a lot of cement. You know, there's a lot of like, you know, city scenes where it's cement, cement, cement. You know, but I always got in trouble when it came to something that had a lot of green in it. It's like, oh my gosh, I got to do something about this. And <laughs> I was getting a little bit like burnout of doing the Pittsburgh stuff for a little while there. And I decided I need a change. So I actually took <clears throat> some workshops with Richard McKinley, who is a phenomenal landscape artist, a plein air landscape artist. He lives over in Oregon. Mm -hmm. And um, I decided I would take, I loved his stuff. And, and the colors were just like, they sung to my soul. Yeah. And so I tried to, you know, get to a workshop and I called up and they said, great, you're number 41 on the list. Oh, so I tried another and I was 20 on the list. Jeez. So I tried another and I was 11. And I thought I might get that one, you know, and that one ended up being New York City. So the first time I met Richard was New York City and I didn't, he gave us a list of materials, pastels I never used, paper I never used, outside stuff I never used. I was always a studio painter and I basically showed up there as a student with nothing that I recognized. Wow. And, um, and during, and it was right around the time I met you. Really? It was, it was. And what I did was I started painting and I started painting and I thought you guys inspired me to do this. I ended up having an original show of all my plein air landscapes because after New York, I got a call from the next workshop they had gone through all the people and they were got, they got to me. I was number 41 <laughs> and I went to the state of Washington and I spent a nine day boot camp with him. Wow. And then I went to Penn state because a week and a half after that, that went out. So I saw Richard three times that year. Wow. And I did about, I think I did 18 original plain air landscape pieces. And I did this roaming original show to all these different galleries. And so the it really, really helped with my city scenes after that. Um, and it helps with helped with my portraits. Um, I kind of like, you know, when you're learning new things, you kind of go one way and then you come back and you learn a little bit. And you, but when you come back, you're, you're back stronger than you were before. And quite honestly, Richard and Daniel Green were the two people, Daniel Green was an artist, he just passed away, that uh -huh. uh, worked with me with the portraits way back in the early 80s. And other than that, I was pretty much self-taught. Yeah, I kind of learned as I went. Yeah. <coughs> well, there was one painting that you showed me when we were going through a lot of your paintings that I love. Um, and that was the one that everybody talks about that comes to Pittsburgh. Uh, which is when you come through the tunnels. So I'd like to show that one. And I'd like um, you to tell uh, the viewers a little bit about how that one got inspired and started. This is a newbie. This is a newbie. Yeah, I just finished it in the spring. Um, it's called Pittsburgh's Tunnel Vision. Okay, so we got to go back again. Okay. <laughs> okay. My, first, my first experience from Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh is Tom picked me up at the airport. And he was talking to me and we we're going through Robinson, which wasn't really there except for woods and green tree, which was mostly green at the time. And, you know, growing up in Pennsylvania, you know, I've been through some of the tunnels and stuff and, you know, there's just more green on the other side. Yes. And so like we're going through the tunnel and he's just chatting away, not telling me that anything was going to happen. He let me really experience it. So I came out of the tunnel. It was like the whole world felt like it just fell away. And there's this, all this steel, you know, all this shiny metal everywhere. Yep. yep. I didn't even look at the point. I mean, I'm like, I'm just enthralled with all these buildings. And um, 
probably from the time I started painting Pittsburgh on, I thought of that. And it's like, I'd, I'd love to paint that. And of course, stupid me, but I'm like really young. Uh, Tom Bertrone was a state representative. He was in the neighborhood of um, Elliott where uh, we had one of our churches. Uh huh. And he said, Linda, we're working on the Fort Pitt tunnels. You can go out and take some photographs. There's no, no traffic, right? Right. Did I, did I do it? Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> no. And so for years, I've always wanted to paint this view. And then I um, met up at a gallery um, with a, a photographer. He's just absolutely wonderful. It's Emmanuel. Um, and he was showing me pictures on his phone. And he had some photographs from up above the tunnels looking into town. And I said, oh, my gosh, Emmanuel, this is the picture I've been wanting to paint all of my life. <laughs> Aww. And he was so kind. And he said, you know what, Linda, you can use my work. And so I took the photographs that he had taken, about three or four of them. And I liked the colors in one and the, the view in the other and, you know, and the lights. And, you know, so... I did a Linda Barnicott version of his work. Right. Um, now there's a, there's a collector, uh, a new collector actually, who, when he saw this painting, he, he got in touch with me. He says, I, I need to buy this. And so the first three vehicles, the two on the right side and the truck on the left side, they're his vehicles. Oh, no now, way. Two of those vehicles are in Florida and one is in Pennsylvania. And, he, like he took pictures of two of them from his workspace, which he was seven floors up. So he put his vehicles out there and went up to the seventh floor and took pictures. And then the other car that was in Pennsylvania, I didn't realize it. It didn't have an engine in it. He had friends pull it out of the garage, go up on somebody's roof, which I could <laughs> see because the shadow of the fella taking a picture was on the roof in front of him. So that I could have it from the, you know, like if I was above it, you know? And I said, what is, what is on the hood of that car? Oh. And then here it was because it didn't have an engine in it. It didn't have a hood Oh, engine. my word. <laughs> so it was really cool. It's really fun working with people that are in the paintings or have something in the paintings because it really adds to my experience, you know, oh, yeah, and it, and it adds to theirs because they really enjoy seeing their things there. Right. That's what I was going to say. It absolutely adds to yeah. theirs too. It's such a cool thing. Like how cool would that be to have that hanging in your house? A and B <laughs> say, Oh, by the way, those are my two cars in my truck. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so. Well, I love it. And everybody who, uh, you know, comes to Pittsburgh or visits Pittsburgh and goes through the Fort Pitt tunnels and comes out to this side. It is the most spectacular view, especially if it's just like the painting, right? Going, you know, dawn going or dusk going into, you know, nighttime and the lights are just coming on and the barges are going down and just over to the left is Heinz Field and PNC Park. And it really is everything to take in. And if you're driving and don't know the city, you're like, oh my God, because you see the green signs in the picture and you don't know, know. which way to go. It's a GPS <laughs> nightmare if you are not from Pittsburgh, but we all embrace it from Pittsburgh. Those of us that are from Pittsburgh and have learned how to navigate there. That is true. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> but there's been so many um, Pittsburgh movies that kind of showcase this view of people going through and then coming out the other side. And I think you yeah. just captured it beautifully. So yeah, I've had so much response from it, like that wow feeling and yeah. like, you know, so well, that's one of the things I really love about my paintings is I never know, like I paint things and then I put them out there, whether people like them or buy them, they're, they're out. I just put them out, you know, and see, and I always get such great stories, no matter what it is, of like people getting touched by it or remembering something that was really special, you know? So it's it's been a lot of fun for me to get the feedback that I do get over the years. I love what people blessing. when they give you feedback. And I one of the things that I love that you do um, specifically is you write a blog every week. You I tell do. about your journeys through your paintings. And I know this because I get your emails every week. And so, you. you know, even if you're like halfway through a painting, you're, you know, telling them about the progress and, you know, what you're going through, kind of thinking about it. And 
honestly, I would love to see you do like a whole series kind of like we're doing right now, but like for every single painting, just giving the background on that, because if I can spend that much money to buy an original, you know, just to hear you talk about your inspiration and things, it's amazing. It really is for someone so non-talented like myself, we can so worship you to even be able to draw more than a stick figure in at this quality like it's just unbelievable so thank you congratulations had, thank you so much i've had a lot of requests for the stories behind the paintings and i've started to write them down and my goal is eventually someday to have that coffee table book with the stories that go along with the paintings. I am actually working on a new book. I forgot to tell you about that. Oh my gosh. I am working you on You tell. A, yeah, it's going to be it's my it's my splash into the water of books. Uh I am I'm am painting um a book based on the Jolly Old Elf series. Oh, how cool. So it will be a smaller book, um, but it will have the painting. It will have the made up story about like the inspiration behind the painting, but then also the background on why I created it and how I created it. And then a couple other fun facts and stuff in the book. And I'm hoping to have it out for this holiday season. So, oh, wow. Well, yeah. that's ambitious with when you do all of these works of art that just I can't even imagine how many hours you know, that you put into these. So between that and the book, I'd say you're a little busy over there. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So do you do, I mean, obviously, I guess the answer is yes, you do do commission work. I mean, it, like you do for Forbes and for uh, corporate organizations and things like that. Yeah. And actually I, I didn't for the years that I was working on the, the, Forbes project. I can imagine a huge project. It was like, <laughs> let me just do my Pittsburgh and my my Santa and 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 we'll just do that. But now I actually am taking commissions once again, and I actually do have um, a commission coming up of the ship hotel um, that used to be up on the summit. It was actually shaped like a ship, um, so that is a commission for for one of my clients. Oh, how neat! Um, I am going to do a couple more paintings this year on my own um, with some Pittsburgh. So if you can keep it quiet. Yeah. Um, not like we're live or anything, but not, go ahead. Not like we're live. Okay, everybody keep it quiet. Now, uh, <laughs> I'm going to paint the original hot dog shop oh. in Oakland. So since they sadly had to close, I thought I know. that kind of falls into my realm of nostalgia now. So I am actually creating um the, the i'm in this in the process of starting to get ready to sketch it um and then also something that i wasn't i i've actually thought we've actually th tom and i talk a lot about what to paint and um well anyway it's from the north shore looking over at the city with the police memorial in the foreground and to honor the, the fallen police. And, you know, one, I think one of the working titles I have for it right now is uh, watching over Pittsburgh because that's what it just, it just reminds me of. And um, so I've, I've gotten that also in my head of how it's going to look and, and everything like that. It's going to be a nice scene for sure. Uh -huh. actually, actually probably I do like night. I like the time of day when the lights come on and the dark yeah. falls. I really do. It's yeah, just no, a beautiful it, glow. And it looks beautiful on, you know, in your, in your painting. So, so, so those are the couple of things that are coming up for you this year. That's pretty awesome. So where are you located? Where is your studio or your, where are you? I am in my final resting place. <laughs> uh, my husband has been a minister for 36 years and we have moved so many times. Oh my God. Um, this is our first home. It took me until I was 61 to get my first home. <laughs> oh my word. So, so is he retired? He is retired. Yes. And he's been wonderful. It's been a wonderful um, just getting to be around each other and doing things together and, and everything. Um, but I live on Brownsville Road in Brentwood, Pennsylvania. And uh, we have a 1935 house. This whole first basement floor is my studio which is really cool actually everything in this house is my studio he's a very <laughs> generous husband <laughs> i love that about him yeah i have four garages there's a double garage up top and two old carriage garages 
everything has my artwork and my art supplies in it. Um, so, <laughs> and the living room and dining room is my gallery. So when customers come, they come into my gallery, which is uh -huh. our, uh, so it's been, that's been a lot of fun setting up the, the house and everything like that. I oh, you bet. You bet. And you have two kids. I have two beautiful daughters grown, of course. Now. Of course. Yeah. Brittany at 33 and Alyssa at 28. I hope. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, she, I think she turned 29 this year. She's going to kill me. <laughs> and you have grandbabies. And yes, she's married to a lovely man, John, and they have three beautiful granddaughters, two being twins. Oh, my gosh. So they, they got the buy one, get one free. <laughs> <laughs> Did she know that she was a candidate for twins? You know what? We never thought about it. And there's twins wow. in the mom's family. But I always thought it came from the mother's side, you know? And then yeah. I find out that my cousin had twins after my daughter got pregnant with twins. And it's like, huh. Yeah. So, no, we didn't even think about it. it and they're, they're such beautiful girls. Too. All three of them are just so beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Love being a grandmother. <laughs> yes, exactly. Well, that's the that's the blessing is you can sugar them all up and then send them on home. So. <laughs> And teach them to paint, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, except for in our situation, I, I, I do a lot of healthy foods. Ah. Of <laughs> All right, forget the sugar then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so Linda, if somebody wants to reach out to you to either buy prints or get an original or commission you, yes. do you just send them to your website or how would you like them to reach you? Yeah, they can email me through, and actually email me through my website as well. You okay. Know, um, they could give me a call on my phone, um, but email is just as good as anything else. Okay. And what okay. is that email? Go ahead and share that with us. Linda at lindabarnicott.com. So, so very easy. Simple. My first yeah. name <laughs> at my whole name.com. Yeah. Well, that's great. And if you want to follow Linda, you can reach out to her also on Facebook at Linda Barnicott. It's Linda Barnicott painter of memories because there's another Linda Barnicott that's not you. So in Canada, it's so, so fun. So anyway, um, also, uh, they can sign up for my newsletter on my website oh, down yes. at the very bottom, just put in a first name and then their email and then they'll get the stories. They'll get to see the progression of the, the you know, the paintings. Yes. Um, sometimes I do coupons for my customers. Ooh. They get a little extra special stuff. So Yeah. 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 I love that. And if you're interested at all in seeing her journey, the blog posts are great and, uh, and you just get an inside look. Like I love the insides. It's like insider secrets you know what I mean so I so I feel like I know you already even though I knew you like if I didn't know you and was reading those it just gives you so much of the insight of the actual painting and kind of your life in general so I appreciate yeah. that you share that with people because you know it some people don't like to do that so I appreciate that so well yeah. this has been so enjoyable is there anything before we stop for the day that you would love to um, either share with the audience or you know talk about I would be remiss if I didn't mention Wendell August Forge. Oh, um, yeah. They had, oh, I they had that. such a huge impact on uh, my life. And they have created beautiful giftware of my work. So, like, on my site, I not only have paintings, but I have, like, coasters and trays and ornaments and you know keychains and bookmarks but they're all made handmade by Wendell August Forge and they do that for me which is just so amazing that I have them as a vendor you know as well and they've yeah. had me up many times for signings we've done a whole Pittsburgh series together we've done a Kennywood series together it's just been a lot of fun over the years wow that is amazing and I actually have a couple of your ornaments from them um, and then I have one of the ceramic ornaments um, that I purchased when I was down at the marketplace, not last year, but the year before. And I have it hanging in the kitchen the whole year because it's so beautiful. Oh, thank you. It. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But I really appreciate you having me on. This is Oh my gosh. It's absolutely together. my pleasure. Uh, and thank you for being so generous with your time and your expertise and your experience. So if you are out there and would like to contact Linda, please reach out to her and visit her website and sign up for her newsletter or contact her at Linda at Linda, Linda Barnicott.com. I'm telling you a way to impress 
somebody is to have a commission piece and get her to draw them into the painting. I just love, love, love that idea. It's so <laughs> unique. So thank you for everything, Linda. Thank you for everybody watching. My name's Becky Hour. I am your host, and I can't wait to see you in the spotlight. Thank you. Bye, everybody.